Hi y'all, this is Jeff from Jeff's Gardening Tips. I'll be right with you in just a sec. We're going to start our, I guess you'd call it the beginning of the season, working on seeding. So, typically I start uh, everything from seed during the uh, different times of the season as it calls for and what I can add. Um, Right now you'll see this is just in a typical planter's tray full of potting soil which has been compacted. Filled once, pushed down and again so you have soil is really compacted, sat down in here. Uh, so you can start planting your, uh, <coughs> your seeds in your garden going forward. Um, on this video I'll have some links to the side of it and on these links the links will take you to a garden calendar depending on if you're in the east, west, midwest, whatever region you're in and it'll tell you when you're supposed to uh, seed and what seeds start at what time. I follow that a little bit but generally I do it my own way because I start a lot of stuff inside and I prepare to get my plants more mature and growth, growth wise ahead of time so when I do hit the right season and I'm putting things in, I'm ahead so I produce better, a little bit better but it gives you a good a good way and a good starting point for this. So I'm not going to bore you with me opening up every pack of seeds uh, every time to show you what's going on. This is the grow light I have and I'll put it on the table before I'm done that I use on these. Uh, so they get real stringy and straggly if you leave them in sunlight and window, which I will, but only so much. This is the, you'll see here right here, this is a miracle Grow potting mix. Uh, this stuff is phenomenal for this type of stuff and this is what I use in all my garden containers with uh, uh, I'm losing my mind right now, cow manure and that and then I mix in my other little stuff with it and it just makes such a potent growth pattern for everything that no matter if you're using buckets, barrels, boxes above ground, even in the ground you're digging it just it puts such a good thing in and throughout the year you can just add your fertilizers as you need them. So tomorrow I'll be seeding this up, but I won't be seeding this up with any uh, warm weather plants, anything like that. Uh, this is more for your uh, peas, broccolis, cauliflowers, lettuces, green stuff that can handle freezing, not like 25 degrees, but can handle below 32. Um, but you can still get your stuff ready because that stuff when it develops and goes through, it'll take probably two weeks for everything to start coming up in here and you'll put like a couple different seeds in each hole because which one do is you wanna see which ones are better than the other and the ones that aren't good, you're gonna be taking out to, to either leave two or singly if they're far enough apart in each little container area there so they can start growing. Um, then people are like, oh, what do I do the whole time? You're just, you're just watering them and what ends up happening as you're watering them is until they do come up, you got to keep, you know, I'll, I'll keep these in the house, but uh, you can see that some of the markings on the lid from previous, I'll get rid of that, but once you get them uh, in there, it'll take about two weeks for them to get up, but in the meantime, you have to take a, another top of a container, you see I have one underneath for water, just in case, and then this one, and what this container does is until they start coming up, it allows them moisture and it becomes like a, uh, just like the greenhouse I have outside, except it condensates very heavily, allows a seed to grow. You don't want to have any fertilize, anything at all at this present time. You just want it to grow off the potting soil itself. Once it, once it does that, you'll see as you come through here, you'll check every so often, after two weeks, you'll see, see a little bit come up. When they all get, I don't know, inch, inch and a half high and they're starting to hit the lid, that's when you can remove, take this off of there, then they're going to grow in sunlight and with the grow light, which is here, which I'll put on the table for you to see, see a good end of grow light. So once, once you get that going, you get the grow light, people are like, yeah, yeah, but how do you leave them in there for eight to 12 weeks without fertilizing them? You do fertilize, but what you do is you take fertilizer like this, plant food or the um, miracle grow, they sell a little green box. I don't think I have it out here yet. Uh, green box, and you can do that, but normally they'll say a teaspoon per a gallon or two of water. With this you can't do that. So what you do is you take a quarter teaspoon per two gallons, just 
you don't want to put a ton of fertilizer on because it will kill the new things. But after like three weeks probably, and you've been watering them, all you want to do is, is mix up a jug, a gallon of jug, with maybe a quarter teaspoon to maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, just mix it in enough. Uh, make sure it's thoroughly mixed, and all you want to do is just take that jug. You don't want to pour it, you want to pour it in like a teaspoon or a mixing spoon. Just little by little, drop one on there on each one of these uh, holes here. And what that allows you to do is have just the right amount of fertilizer, not too much. And you can't fertilize anything until you see at least two leaves off it. So what that does is one leaf means it's starting mature. Two, if you get one of the stems that come up or the plants come up and you see two stems on it, then they can be fertilized. So once you see two, you can put a little bit of that on there. You're only gonna have to do this uh, maybe once a month until they come out. And it's just just very little, if, if that, because you're in an environment where you're not losing a lot of minerals and whatever minerals and water you have down goes in this pan below and the water sucks those minerals back up and does it. So you definitely don't want to over fertilize when they're babies like this, but they will need a little bit in them as they go because like anything else, they do need they do need to feed. So this is uh, a miracle Grow plant food and then they sell it in like a blue powder. Also, we just want to make sure it's for like vegetables and stuff, and that stuff will uh, do your job. Remember, whatever it says, if it says a teaspoon per gallon or two gallons, or whatever, you are cutting that down to a sixth of what it is. You just, you barely want that gallon of water to have just a little bit of that in there, and then we're just going to spoon feed each plant as it goes. Now, I have one of these ready now. At this time of year, I might only do one, maybe two, because I'm only doing the greener vegetables that I can put in earlier, plus the ones I already have in my greenhouse that are growing. So uh, I don't put that much in once it gets uh, mid-February, which is uh, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, that's when I'll start putting in the next type of plants that I'm gonna be putting in. So the ones I plant now, the real fair greens that can go in cold weather, I can put them in before the last freeze, like two weeks before the last freeze, I can put them into the ground. So what I do is I pull this square out, I'll transplant, transport it, sorry, transplant it into a bigger, little bigger pot then they'll be able to sit around and get the, root, the roots a little more growing. And then once I'm done with that, and those pots will look just like these brown ones here, and they, you leave them in the ground, they fall apart. And they'll look just like this, about this size. So it's probably double what you have. So you'll have one of these. And then as I put these in, I'll, I have these markers here. And you just mark what you have in your rows. Uh, it won't be too much to mark now. You know, you just pop that marker in there and and you'll know if you're going this way, if you're going east to west or north to south, which you're putting in there and which you're planting at that time. But they'll go to this jug next, which will be beginning of March, mid-March, I'll pop them into that, a little more dirt, let them get a little more growth to them. So typically in the eastern region, mid-Atlantic region, your uh, last frost date is date on record is the second week in May. Typically it doesn't go that far, but I've seen years it's going even longer, but that's your, your plan date right around Mother's Day or right before. So the things I'm putting in now, cauliflower, broccoli, lettuce is not, they can handle a certain amount of cold weather and by then it's not typically 20s and teens, it's just 30s at night and 40s. So they'll still grow and still prosper because the days are 50 and 60, so everything will work out just fine for those type of green. The next ones will not be able to handle a freeze, but they will go in after that frost state, but they'll be prepared so they can go right into warm weather and grow. Now your uh, uh, your corns, your uh, cucumbers, your squashes, your zucchinis, your melons, any, anything that's kind of like, like that will, um, will um, be your last go by. Now those, I will start some inside. I'll start those and probably about the end of March and, and the problem is they once they start growing they get big and bulky and leafy and they're hard to keep in these pots and hard to support so that's when I'll put them in pots probably three times the size of this and deeper in the and deeper in the pots and then when I'm ready I can just take them right out pull the whole thing out and put them into my bigger pots outside uh, but you, you got a lot of those a lot of the tomatoes a lot of the uh, uh, eggplants, which I saved from last year, we're gonna see how that regrown, uh, re, re, winter, re winterizing them and keeping them, which I'm keeping the greenhouse. They said they're supposed to be uh, 
come back every year for like three years. I'm gonna see how that works this year. If they don't, I'll redo them. Uh, but most of them, uh, I start all those by seed, and I can start them right by the seed in the ground. And when you put them in in warm weather, like uh, the zucchinis, the eggplants, and all that kind of stuff, it's a matter of same thing, maybe a week or two. But when they come up, once they hit that warm weather and they start growing, it's only a month, month and a half, and they're up this tall, starting to flower and starting to get ready to produce because they are warm weather vegetables that just love the warm weather. So that that uh, that's not a worry till later because if you put them out early, they're not going to do anything for you. Um, so and then when you get into the summer, what you got to watch for is just like this has holes drilled and the water goes in this pot. And I think I mentioned this before, anything you put in a pot, a container, no matter if it's uh, a cloth container, a bucket, a wooden box, anything above the ground, you got to have holes drilled in it, it's got to have drainage. Vegetable plants love water. So do trees and bushes, they love water. But if you let water lay in the bottom of the container, any amount of water, it will not, it will not grow the way it's supposed to, it will not produce the way it's supposed to, and trees and bushes will die from it. So around here in this area, uh, you might dig down six inches in some place and have topsoil, but most of it's two to three. And after that, we live in what's called the clay. So when you gotta put a fence post in or dig something up or do something, unless it's really rainy season, it's hell. And then once you do dig it up and you put your plant in, you can't plant it too deep, even though they want you to, you have to kind of build them out and put a little bit higher because the roots will not go down inside. The ground at that time so they won't go into clay they just will not go anywhere so what I normally buy or I plant a lot around here's a lot of uh, uh, oaks maples um, pines uh, and the bushes the same way that if you watch the way they grow most of their roots they start to grow down but they all grow out this way along the ground these little roots and a little bumpiness at times but you start planting stuff in clay that's supposed to go around and grab a root and go straight down and grab something, don't grow here. It'll just die. And really not. Weather, real heavy weather and rain and everything, they'll just fall over. You hear of it all the time. You got to buy, buy and put the right things in at the right time for your to have success with landscaping and with the garden. Um, the Planting season coming upon us, and like I said, you got to click when you open the video up. You'll click, and it'll have links on there, and I'll have it going to a growing garden page, and you can print it out and have it for when you want. If you're beginning or new, or you're doing a little while, where it'll kind of help you out with knowing where everything goes and, and the days and the kind of the months of when you're supposed to prep everything. Uh, my garden gardening used to go from. Um, I'm trying to think. My garden used to go when I first started. I'd start it in June and not knowing anything about it and it was everybody in the summer and i'd have a little success not much success didn't know about prepping it didn't know about after and how it would grow my garden now grows into november i start my garden back in inside january but in the ground in april and it just depends on what you put in but it can all end up the, the amount of you get out of it is just amazing it, it's it's great to think, see things grow um, and gardening is a good hobby for a lot of people. So I really enjoy it. Of course, my dog, my helper likes it, and my family loves to eat the stuff, and the neighbors like to eat what I make out of there and grow, and then I get to make a lot of dishes for them and uh, stuff like that. And I'll also put my, on this next video, I'll, on a link next to it, I'll put my Instagram page too, because that'll show you more. I don't try to put too many videos on Instagram. The copies kind of to it, but it takes too long to download it. But I do put a lot of, still pictures of what I've grown, what I'm cooking. I haven't gotten to the point of writing how I do it, but typically when I'm making my spaghetti sauces or I'm making a eggplant slash onion dips and dip, onion and uh, stuff kind of casseroles and everything in it, uh, there's a certain way I do it and because uh, I used to cook when I was younger and it, they love it, but like I told you, I'm not much into it. I do, like in the garden, I'm a green bean, lettuce, potato, certain things but the rest of it they go crazy over but me i'm not really interested in the stuff uh, i don't have a taste for it and believe it i'd rather have a canned vegetable than a fresh one i know it sounds nuts because i do so much gardening but that's just where i'm at with it also like i said i can show you these but you see they're just 
they're that brown disposable uh, type of paper. And when you put these in, you can put your plastic in there, last forever. Well, if you want, when you put them in the ground, if you're putting them in a bucket or a ground box, you, I generally just cut the bottom of them off and then just stick them right down in the dirt, throw it around the dirt, break that little edge around the top, and just leave that right there. And that just becomes more um, um, compost because it just degrades into, into dirt and dust and everything like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's also here, I had for these pods. Now when I'm using these other tr type of trays, uh, I just wanted to show you what kind of type of trays. So when I go to the bigger ones, I'll have a tray like this that goes, these will sit in here like this. But the same thing happens with these. I'll put them in a plastic head, one of these clear plastic heads, sit it down. Put them every so often when they get bigger. Fertilizing is the same way. You don't do anything crazy until they're ready to get in the ground. Uh, and these things go together pretty good. I mean, there's not coming apart from it right now, but there's two of these together right now. Um, and then you, then you just start itemizing so they're bigger. And then when you do go to transplant them in the ground, you're not trying to do it with these tiny ones. And once the season gets going a little bit and you're starting, what I do is I take them out on 40, 50 degree days and let them blow around the wind and harden and do everything like that. And then I bring them back in because you can't leave them out the whole time because they're still uh, in the uh, infantile stage and they're still babies as far as plants go, even though they're getting bigger. So you got to have little wind hit them by, little by little. And then on the where I have them here on the porch now or inside the house on the window, it's always roughly 70 degrees in there. So I keep it 70. I keep the moisture on them. Like I said, once the covers come off, then it's... You, you want them to see the sunlight, you want them to see different things, but what they'll end up doing is, my window was here, all these will grow this way on an angle. And every night you gotta go and spin the pot and then it'll start growing that way. But they start getting real stringy because they're getting too much sun and not the right type of sun. So, uh, I mean, they're getting the right type of sun, but I'm saying they're not getting the right type of light they need. And that's where you have to use uh, grow lights on. And the grow lights put out just the right amount of uh, light and the different colors for what you're trying to do with them and trying and trying to how you're trying to make them work to grow right but these seed pods i use these an awful lot and these little seed pods they're flat and you would uh in one of the smaller black trays i have there, there's i got smaller trays that are made just for these you just sit them right in the bottom of the pot like that and you'll fill 30 or whatever amount you want to put in there you just fill them fill the tray up with water and, and they just expand up to like two inches then you drain the excess water off, you crack the, the uh, cloth paper style stuff that's right here on the top. You just crack that up a little bit, pop your seed or two in there. Then you just let them sit in there and they, the pods end up being like that tall inside the thing. And they're probably, I don't know, uh, two inches round. Like that, and they fit right in the, the containers like this, but they're made for them a little smaller. Then you pop them all in there and then these just hold everything right in there. And they're nice because they contain everything. Um, they contain everything in that pod that expands like this and it it's easier to kind of control what they're doing and everything the problem is when they start to get bigger there's so many in a container they're starting to tie into each other and starting to get tangled up so you want to there's a little bit more to that when you don't have more area but these do work very good they'll grow they'll grow just about anything for you to uh for you you'll just be amazed at what they do uh, these containers here have a ton of these, and these, these are great containers, which you can do the same thing. Where you can just, this is like if I'm just doing just tomatoes or just lettuces, or I'm, you know, I'm saying I want to put uh, big boy tomatoes. I'll pop this thing, just pound it down, pound it down, get it tight, take a pencil, make a hole, drop three or four big boy tomato seeds in each one, cover it back up, water it one more time lightly, center it. I don't have to cover it because these are, because tomatoes and those things start more in a warm weather. And they'll be inside until they grow and their, their the hardness comes to them. And then, once they start to grow, um, you know it's all the same plant. Roots aren't getting messed up. But man, when you're done, you can just pop the whole thing out, take it wherever you're planting outside, pop right in there, and you're ready to go. And these these can grow. Uh, you can leave these grow to because you're going to separate them down to one when you find the best growth in each pod down to one. You can let those grow up to five, six inches tall, which, which you would get in the store in a normal pot that's round and then put them right in a whole pile of, of dirt uh, that you're going to be putting in your bigger container to grow it. Uh, one of the keys is you saw my videos, a lot of my videos last year, so I did go to a lot of grow bags, but 
couple things I learned last year, which I learned something every year, is I've always had good production, but I learned that the uh, watermelon slash cucumber slash tomato slash, you know, the fruity type of stuff that gets bigger and needs more energy. I went to 20 gallon uh, containers, which are huge, and it's a lot of dirt. It's probably four or five bags of dirt and everything messed up, and it's heavy as crap, but once you put them in, you can put one plant in there, and it's amazing what it'll produce, and not knowing it and learning from it that the more sp uh, space that one plant has that gets that much to it, it'll just go crazy and grow everything you want in that one pot. Where in the litter of pots, once the roots get out to where they can go and can't get no further, it limits the size of the vegetable and the stuff. Now, when you're dealing with just uh, uh, peppers, bell peppers, uh, uh, jalapeno peppers, uh, littler stuff, um, uh, yellow cucumbers, uh, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of some of the smaller stuff I grew, because I know I'm going to grow most, most of the bigger stuff, but that smaller stuff will grow good in a little five gallon or a ten gallon pot, no problem. Good, knowing that one stalk, everything goes off when you come to tomatoes and watermelon and all that stuff, it's just growing everywhere and you got to keep it trimmed up. <coughs> and with the, uh, I'm trying to think what I did. There were a couple other things I did last year. I grew in the bigger pots, and I was amazed at the difference in the production and how the plant looked, and how much more I could could do with it. Especially like the yellow squash, the zucchini, and uh, oh, I can't think of the name of them right now. Uh, oh, spaghetti squash. They just were just outrageous, and of course everybody loves me and my spaghetti squash for that big and that round. Uh, and it wasn't one, they say the most you get off a plant typically is three to four, five max, but they all get smaller. I had six off of one plant and four were like that big, the other two were smaller. So last year's production was just amazing. And that's just where we're uh, at with it. I'm just glad we did what we had to do with it. So as long as you, like I said, in this stage, all you really need is your potting soil. When I get to mixing dirt in the tractor, and into everything else, when I'm starting to fill the big bags and the pots, I'll come back and give you another video so you can see how I hoe all that stuff together, mix it up, put it together, and see how it's going. I wanted to show you a couple things we're still doing here on the porch. Uh, I'm going to cover this now, even though I really don't have to because there's nothing growing in here, but it's just a, uh, you know, my grandson comes over and different things like that, things. Uh, and this is only one tray, like I said, so I'm going to be having, by the time I'm done with this, I'll have probably, uh, at least eight to ten of these trays pre-growing stuff. And whatever doesn't grow, doesn't grow, and whatever does, does, and it's, it's just nice. I'll show you this grow light when it's on later, I haven't run all the cords and everything, but what's nice about these grow lights is once once it's grown, and I put this on this table, I can, I spread this out, and see, you want to keep this right down on the vegetables to a point once the lid comes off and what's nice about these grow lights is they they know the colors of what you're supposed to have to be growing things so this grow light it goes between white uh white orange and blue and it just depends on what, you, what you're using and how you're using it and um, how much light you're looking for at that time um, but once I get it all done, I'll come back. Once you come up out of the box or out of their pods and start growing and get a couple, I'll come back and show you the late. And as we go through the season, I just wanted to show you how to early. This is way ahead of time. Early season starts with just the greens that can grow at low temperature. That's it. Um, I'll also um, I to show you, like when we're talking about seeds and stuff, uh, as you can see, I got bags and bags and tons of seeds, but you can see them. People are like, hey, what do you do with your seeds? Some of these seeds I have, which they say after a year or two, they're no good, won't grow. Some of these seeds are a better part of five to eight years old. I buy new ones when I need to, but they're always in sealed bags, kept in the, the shed or they're in a, in a container. Um, I would say right now I have inside this box, you can see here, I. I say I have a, a, over 200 different uh, types of vegetables there that are in that are seeds that I still use and can use, and you'll find out that you can also um, take the seeds and 
see if they still are good by using different things. Certain ones, they, I'll be honest with you, they won't come back. Uh, but generally, on average, I would say it's, a, it's probably a, uh, closer to an 80%. Even with the older seeds, you'll still be able to grow and you'll be able to do things. And when I was saying about mixing the uh, water and see, like, if it called for a big teaspoon like that, you're going to want to take it all the way down to something this small, like eighth or sixteenth, and just a little bit of fertilizer and two gallons of water. Because otherwise, just like if you're fertilizing the sun on your garden or anything like that, that can end up uh, tearing that up. So I'll be seeding these tomorrow, this and probably another tree tomorrow. Once I'm done seeding them, I'll get them watered up, I'll get them ready to go. And as the season comes along and things keep moving and going, it, going to move along, uh, I'll keep you updated as we go through it on the uh, different stages of the, the growth of everything. And when we start moving them inside, outside, into other pots, I'll try to keep up as much as I can. Like I said, I'll send you a calendar link for this video and a link to Instagram so you can see how we cook some stuff up and the products we come up with. And then I'll check a couple of... Uh, other links I want everybody to see things, see about seeding and stuff like this. But once we get going here, I'll, I'll keep you up to date and I appreciate it. Ben, I just want to show you a couple other things here on the, the uh, garden while we're here. Well, not the garden, geez, I'm losing my mind. Out here on the porch, you can still see. Been out here all winter, I just turned the heat on, it hasn't been on. And uh, you can see that basil just going crazy. It's a huge bush of it. Anytime that Heater, which is up here, comes on. When we get in the hot tub, or in that hot tub, so uh, things are still going pretty good out here. And I wanted to show you this fern tree, or bush, or whatever you want to call it. It was nothing. It was dying a couple years ago. I bought it back, and it's just pleasantly gotten better and better. And uh, you know, with the way things go, it just kind of uh, keeps everything going and regenerates around the porch and makes things uh, better off of the way we are for uh, growing and making you feel better about being in an area. Well, I'm going to cut out from there. I appreciate everybody paying attention. If you can follow, uh, follow me on Jeff's Gardening Tips on YouTube and Jeff's Gardening Tips on Instagram, and we'll just keep pushing along and keep sending you questions and anything you got, and we'll, we'll just keep responding and get everybody as much as we can informed on uh, how to grow vegetables and plants and trees or anything you have. Thank you and have a good night.